Welcome back everyone to this final part on Logitech Capture. I'm AJ Barce, and in this video, what we're gonna look at is setting up Logitech Capture as your virtual camera. Now, before I dive too deep, I wanna explain what a virtual camera is. So a virtual camera is the notion that you use a piece of software as a capturing video device of some sort and use that kind of piece of software as a its own driver to be a camera as a in a virtual environment and be able to plug that into say uh, a live streaming app such as Zoom or Teams or or Google or anything like that. Now the benefit of this is that you have control over that stream as it were. So that gives you the control to dial in say your green screen like I'm going to do here in a second and dial in perhaps your lighting and what you see here is what would be handed off to say Zoom. So the benefits of this, you're able to do things like, for instance, doing a demonstration like I'm doing right here using Logi Capture, and this gets handed off into Zoom, and Zoom is just broadcasting it. So if you're doing synchronous instruction, you just keep doing what you're doing in Logi Capture, and Zoom is just taking what you give it um, and, and putting it through in your live call. So I'm going to actually use this, this, this workflow in Teams, or sorry, in Zoom, so that you can see how this works. Now, speaking of teams, that was a little bit of a Freudian slip, I admit. And here's the thing. At the time of this recording, both Mac and PC, virtual cam has been disabled in teams, and I don't know why. It used to work in the past, but until Microsoft patches or updates the team client, both on the Mac and PC, this won't work. So Microsoft, please update soon. Uh, so we're going to be looking at using Zoom, uh, by and large, because most people are using Zoom for this. Uh, so if you're if if you're in the Teams camp, uh, you can email me directly. Uh, if you have any questions, um, my email is down below. If you and again, I don't have any ETA or update as to when Microsoft might patch the client on both the Mac and the PC side. I just know uh, I looked to do it for this module and it's not working anymore. So it's unfortunate. So let's go ahead and let's dive in to Zoom and using a virtual cam. So diving in, I've turned on my chroma key green screen, as you can tell, and I'm gonna be displaying everything on my, my screen because one of the limitations of doing a virtual cam, especially if you're doing the windowed mode. So for instance, if we go to my second display, which is what you're seeing up here, uh, I have it as full display because I'm gonna be doing system level stuff. If you do, for instance, if I bring up Zoom, and I just do a window capture, it will look great. However, if I deviate from anything that is this view of this app, for instance, if I go over to where I'm going to be going, which is settings, you notice you don't actually see a dropdown for settings. So let me show the difference of what this looks like very quickly. If I switch over, you'll notice that now you can see everything that I'm doing over here. So one of the limitations I do want to point out is when you're doing this um, mode, what you may want to do is do what I just did is maximize the screen as opposed to just doing a windowed mode. Um, it just depends on what you're going to be showing and sharing. But uh, if you're trying to do that single single app mode, like for instance in PowerPoint if you're using, or if you're using an app um, and you're going to be just in that one browser or that one application, you may want to do just single mode so that you have the ability to grab other tools and not have to worry about students or whoever's on the receiving end not knowing that you're not showing them everything that you see. So that out of the way, I'm going to go up to my avatar and I'm going to go ahead and go into settings. Now, if you've done the podcasting tutorial on the STC's Canvas, these settings will look very familiar. Instead of audio, we're going to go into video. And in video, you can see me. Hello, everyone. Uh, now, typically, we specify a camera. And I could go dedicated directly to the, the C920, or I could go into my built-in camera. But you will also notice Logi Capture. Also, you also see one called Sony Camera. More on that one later. If I hit Logi Capture, uh, everything that you see here is being piped from Logi Capture, including my green screen, the lighting, etc. 
Now that I have that specified, if I were to go into a new meeting, now fading over to what it looks like also in a call, I'm gonna go ahead and move myself really quickly here. And where we normally go to specify what camera we're in in a call, if I go ahead and click on the Chevron, you'll notice that I have an option for Logi Capture because now I've made that, that specification to use Logi Capture as my webcam. Now, if you don't do it in the settings, that's totally fine, honestly. Um, I prefer to go into settings first because as I do my, my future Zoom recordings, I just want Zoom to naturally just grab Logi Capture and not the, the Logic Tech camera or the built-in camera. So that's the reason why I took you in through the settings first. But at any point, you can always change your camera uh, in the Zoom call. So if I go ahead and click on that Chevron, I can see that Logi Capture is selected as opposed to the webcam or the FaceTime camera or my Sony camera, more on that in a future video. But uh, when we go ahead and we initiate our video, you'll see that now everything that you see on my display, and I know this looks really, really uh, trippy, um, you get this cascading effect because it's pulling actively from Logi Capture because everything that I'm doing in Logi is being handed off into Zoom. So what's also really cool about this, uh, let me go ahead and stop my video in Zoom. Uh, a nifty trick about this, if you use Logi Capture like I'm doing right now, if flipping back over to Logi Capture, obviously we have that cascade effect because I'm showing my full display. But the big thing that I want to show is that I've been recording this whole time. So a really nice trick to using this workflow with uh, a virtual cam is that you can use still Logi Capture as a recording device and as a virtual cam. Now, the implications of this is that you can have your live stream out through Zoom, which Zoom typically downscales the resolution, but your local recording can still be at 1080p or even 720p or whatever your camera specifications for recording is. So you can get two copies. You have your live copy and then you have your recorded copy using Logi. And like I said, the reason why we would do this as opposed to recording through Zoom is that you get a higher quality and bigger file size uh, video then you do just doing the straight to web recording in Zoom. So that's kind of a, a helpful hack, especially if you're doing both a live stream and you want to have the highest quality video for editing, perhaps for an asynchronous environment. So that wraps up this look at uh, virtual cams. It's a really easy setup once you have everything dialed in for your camera in Logi Capture. And again, go to that training video at the beginning of this module if you want to know how to set that up. That wraps it up for this module. Thank you again so much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next STC workshop.